the help video for the Pivot Interactive Why Do We Have Seasons. This is still for the Reason for the Seasons section. But there are two simulations. So I'm going to talk about this second simulation down here. And I'm going to relate it to the first one. So what we get in this first simulation up here is we get to see where the Earth is in relation to the Sun at different times of the year. Right? So now, imagine if we could zoom in on this Earth here, and we could see all of the sun rays hitting the Earth. That's what this second simulation gives us. So as we're looking at this, let me pause it here. I'll line this up. We can see the sun rays are hitting from this side. So in your head, you should imagine that the sun is here, right? And it's shooting all those sun rays at this part to this side, side of the Earth. So relating this to the previous simulation, that would be here. Notice, this right here is what we're looking at here, except it's more detailed and zoomed in. So up here in this simulation, we can see that the sun is, I mean, on the left side of the Earth, for explanation purposes, and that solar energy is hitting here. We have the axis tilted away, the northern axis, part of the axis tilted away from the sun, southern axis tilted towards, remember it's 23.4 degrees. And we're also imagining, as in the previous example, the equator is somewhere like here. That's pretty terrible. Let's try that again. It's hard to freehand it with the mouse. There it is. So when we go looking down here, they actually have the equator drawn, and you can see how much solar radiation is hitting the northern hemisphere versus the southern hemisphere. Notice more arrows means more sun. Also, the, the straight line, the more direct, that's even stronger sun. Because if you're getting solar radiation kind of hitting almost parallel to the Earth, it's not as direct. It's not a direct input. So now with this simulation, we actually can turn it into a light sensor. There's like this block that we can do. And you can move it up and down. So you can see at certain places you're getting more sun here than you would be getting like here. I like this tool because you can do surface observer like a little human. It's hard to see right when you're at like the equator. Remember zero, boom, zero is at the equator. There it is, perfect equator. But if you go towards the north, see it's a little person sitting there. Now you can see, look, the days are very short, daylight short, nights are very long for the northern hemisphere in this situation. It tells you what the date is, right? We're in December here. Remember, you're visualizing this, December here. What's cool is you can actually move this person down if you go to the southern hemisphere, look, much longer daylight, right? And you can even compare it. If you're right at the equator, the sun's kind of halfway through, same length day and night. What's cool is that if you actually go six months, now you're on the opposite side of the sun, this would be like, if the sun was here, the earth was here, boom, come from this direction, axis tilted towards the sun, now the sun is no longer on this side. The sun is now on this side, shining its radiation this way. But you can see, if we manipulate the little observer, while you're at the equator, the sun is about, let's get right to the solstice, about here. The sun is halfway across. So if you're living at the equator, you get equal day and night times. If you're on the northern hemisphere, then look, shorter nights, longer days. Something really cool, if you go far enough north, check this out. If you live up here, really, really northern Canada, Alaska, you don't actually get full night. The sun never sets. But if you go to the opposite side of the earth, you live in Antarctica, guess what? It's dark all the time. You never get the sunrise. Right. So when you're looking at this, and remember where the sun would be. Where it gets a little bit confusing is when you go towards like the fall, we don't see lines anymore. That's because the sun in this situation 
what would happen is the sun would be behind the earth. So the sun, that would be like if we were right here. So we actually can't see the light hitting the earth. That's what this is. And when you're looking at it like this, right, if we go back to this situation, that's when the sun is over here on the side. But if we look at it when these lights, lines are here, that would mean that the sun is right here. And the light is going straight through the screen into the earth. So the lines are straight at the earth. Now what's cool is, if you want to get really specific, you can actually count how many sun rays are hitting each hemisphere. So here we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Both hemispheres are getting the same amount of solar radiation. This part here would be like if you were, if we're looking at the other simulation, if you had the Earth right here. Oh, go for that, right? There, the rays are shooting straight that way at the Earth. So looking at this simulation, imagine you are the sun and you're shining the light straight from your eyes, straight at the Earth. Those are the beams you'd get. All right. Look, you can even count here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 sunbeams hit the Northern Hemisphere at this time of the year, 7 here. Wow. So make sure you understand what you're looking at here. Rewatch this video if you need help, and you can relate it to this, but that, that should help you.